This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless A Trading Frank. It's approximately the 7th of April, 2019. Uh, it's not approximately, it is the 7th of April, 2019. My apologies. It's approximately 8.44 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on an absolutely gorgeous uh, east, uh, northeast evening here on the New York, New Jersey waterfront overlooking New York City. And that might be the reason why we have uh, our esteemed and loyal member, uh, Mike, here in attendance out there from the Midwest. But the rest of the crowd seems to be enjoying the evening, which they should. Nobody should be sitting listening to some uh, strategic webinar at uh, Clueless Day Trading on a gorgeous Sunday evening like that. However, on that note, these sessions are recorded and uploaded to the Clueless Day Trading YouTube channel. So feel free to review it prior to trading tomorrow. Okay, good evening. And yeah. uh, sorry about that. That was my other screen playing my previous recording. And uh, feel free to uh, review them at your own time, hopefully sooner than later. And uh, that certainly will help you with your trading. Full disclosure, this is purely for financial education and not for any solicitation or advice. And we shall begin. As I always do, uh, and I believe that's extremely helpful to all traders, members, free trial subscribers, and anyone else out there with the internet connection who has access to, who can easily access for free uh, these free strategic webinars on the Clueless A Trading channel. And a quick and powerful reminder to follow us on our growing, I should say growing Instagram presence, which is primarily used for marketing and promotional purposes to get the word out there on who we are, considering that we are kind of a private exclusive type of uh, service which doesn't go out there blasting on on stock tweets through or any other large uh, promotional social media sites we don't pay you know we don't go out there spend thousands and thousands of dollars telling people that they'll be rich overnight and all that kind of stuff that many services do so we do it organically through the actual facts and proof of our charts our, uh, our, our, our trades and uh, the Instagram channel has been a fantastic conduit. So please follow us there. If you don't have an Instagram account, like I always say, create one and just hit follow. Tell all your friends, anyone who's interested somewhat in the markets, uh, trade a little bit or trade a lot. Just uh, go look at some of the highlights of what we do and uh, you certainly will be nothing short of impressed on, um, on, on, on the results. Saying all that, um, let me cover a couple of the broader points here. The markets, since I did, since my past few video casts or my over the past months or so, uh, the overall forecast on what I have said the markets would do and what uh, certain stocks would do have been dead right. There's no question about that. How traders manage their profits, how they freak out, how they get excited, and how when if they're taking profits too early, which we all do at times, certainly. Uh, that's that's only na that that's you know that's something unavoidable given the fact that there is so much volatility in the market, both on an intraday and intra week basis. Despite the fact that the market has been on a consistent overall uptrend, you can see that here on the monthly charts. I'll keep on flipping through the charts as we go along. The fact remains that every morning when we wake up, futures could be down 30, uh, 10 points, 20 points, up five points, uh, or middle of the day, there could be a sell program. Uh, it's uh, it's just a fact of life. It's a fact of algorithmic high-frequency trading uh, bots, which control the intricate movements in the market, not necessarily on the longer term, but certainly on the shorter term. There's no question about it. So it is only natural that if you gap up open or a market gap up open, you have to take some profits. If we are open down, depending on the tactical levels, using our shorter term and intermediate term charts, uh, we can, we dollar cost average, get in there, uh, take some very nice profits that the market has a reflex rally or reflex bounce. Uh, we do a lot of reversal trades. So all those things are part of active trade management. Whether you're an active trader or a part-time trader, you still have to employ trade management practices, which I have talked about extensively, and more importantly, have taught extensively to my advanced coaching students, my ACS students, which anyone uh, can sign up for on the website under members content. So saying all that, that I believe uh, is the most uh, difficult part of any trader, any trader, the actual trade management part. 
Because if you look at the picture of the market, going back to 2009 here, 2009, all the way up to here to where we are, I mean, that's gazillions of points. That's 23, uh, 2,600, uh, uh, 26, yeah, 20, more than 2,600, close to 26, yeah. Let's put it this way. It's 2,600 points. I mean, that's a lot, okay? So we'll put that in context. 2,600 divided by where we were around 660, 666. You know, the market is up almost four times, you know? It's up 390%. 390 percent since 2009 so if you really scratch your head and think and all of us are guilty of this uh is why are we gazillionaires you know why are we not like swimming in millions and millions and millions of uh, uh of dollars if it's so easy to be a trader in hindsight everything's 2020 each of these candles are monthly candles i deviate a little bit from covering the broader points because this is important this is extremely important this is where we all go wrong, all right? We're all guilty of this one way or the other. We minimize that guilt and the stupidity of trading. We minimize it. We don't eliminate it, but we minimize it to a very large degree by using these very powerful tactical charts that I publish on a real-time basis every single day, every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, every hour, all through the day. And then these powerful webinars, strategic webinars, the powerful advanced coaching sessions, and everything that I try to do to provide the strategic tools and myself constantly learning how to adapt to these extremely robotic markets. So the question remains that if, 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 if trading and investing, and we're talking about trading here, which is a function of investing, obviously, except on a shorter term basis, uh, was so easy, then from the deep bottom of 2009, all the way up here, pull back, and now we're getting back up there again. Why is why are traders not making you know gazillions of dollars? Why are institutions and hedge funds and the Wall Street gurus telling us to buy these very powerful tactical dips? We have, we have here at 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 at, at Clueless A Trading all through for more than a decade. Well, a decade. So, so you question yourself for a minute here, okay? So if you if you use the microcosm version of this, this is obviously the longer term picture. It all comes down to your overall cognitive bias, number one, as to how you think that the world's going to end tomorrow, that the Federal Reserve is a great enemy of the people and all that garbage. Uh, and all the conspiracy theories and stuff that many traders believe, because I always believe you cannot mix hardcore politics with tactical trading. Tactical trading requires discipline charts trading. You cannot mix, you know, and people do because emotions are intricately tied in with with uh, uh, with uh, investments. It's your money and your money is tied in with how you look at things. So you mix in all that stuff and you think the world's going to end tomorrow and everything's going to go to hell in a handbasket, uh, then you obviously have not made a single dime or very little since the depths of the market in 2009. And the same thing is happening right now in a microcosmic view, on a shorter term view. So let's take a look at the shorter term picture. So here's your shorter term picture of the market. Let's get this out, okay? I did my last, uh, my last uh, uh, webinar was four days ago, four, ca four calendar days ago. So that was one, two, three, four. I believe it was uh, last, um, Wednesday or Thursday. What day was it? It this was, well, I can't remember. It was last Wednesday and Thursday. Go look at what I talked about. It was a 49 minute video. Just if you want to look at the complete recent one, of course, you can go back to the other ones and say, whoa, this guy talked about this. So this is your shorter term chart. This is the active trade management chart. So when you look at the what I talked about and we were talk, we were stuck in this box which I clearly drew, you know, like I said, even a child can read this chart. They actually can. Uh, and in hindsight, anyone can read this chart. But we were, we were, we had drawn this. We had drawn this since the big, since the, um, again, we had drawn this way back, but since the middle, let's say the middle of, uh, the middle of April, uh, March, 
okay, we had a defined trading range. We had the falling wedge. We had the bear flag, which I was right on. And then we had this box. And we broke out of this box with the theory on, well, not with the theory. It was a volatility induced breakout, not like just, just, not like just a, not like one of these, right? It was more of a volatility induced breakout, but certainly a breakout. And up into the upper, this bull flag channel that I've been talking about for a while. And now we have possibly a little bit more to go or a lot more to go, but I'm talking to the short term picture. Um, and, uh, and anyway, that's the active trade management part up in the 2900 plus range. We're going to go past 2900 one with the other. It's so close. We're 2% away from make for testing the old all time high. See, regardless of anything, the algos and will squeeze the last not there's never a last but majority of the really dogmatic shorts which are institutional shorts mind you uh and without naming any funds but i'll throw one out which 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 has been in the news in the past years as one of the most dogmatic shorts on the market two sigma very large head funds very smart guys and they are very short most of the times and they get blasted. So when you have those technical type of squeezes, you can see the market in the low 2900s real fast. The 2% from here, you know, they'll squeeze the last of those hard two sigma type of heavy duty short positions on the E minis. And they will just squeeze it up 2%. So is that a point of maximum excitement? To me, it's a point of maximum excitement to sell. So I'm always cautious about that. That's why I'm always moving and rolling over the triggers on the S&P strikes as we move along, as we do the 50%, 60%, 120%. And many of you are doing that, I know. I'm not going to harp on some of you who are not doing it. That's your problem, really not mine, because I'm really doing my job 110% and delivering the unbelievably precise, accurate content. I'm not bragging here. It's a fact. So anyway, so, uh, um, but I know many of you are doing it too. So you just move the strikes up. So if you do fall, you've at least captured and kept most of your profit. That's the essence of trade management in really simplistic terms. Using these charts, this is a 15 minute, this is a one hour chart. I have the 15 minute charts. We're not gonna go through that right now, but you can basically see that here was the box. We broke out of the box back on, uh, uh, on the second. What was the second? The second was uh, Tuesday. Okay. We zigzagged our way up. And then we had that, you know, then we had, the, and this was Friday. And this is now. Futures were up about three points, two points. They're down about mm, 0.7, you know, less than a point right now. But you can pretty much see what, what these roadmaps are. And I can certainly draw something like this here to show. That's one. So I constantly update these charts, keeping the overall framework the same because my business is not to change my forecast unless there is a technical melt up or a meltdown in the middle of the day and say, hey, look, I was right. I mean, these charts have been drawn weeks in advance, if not days in advance, so that you all can benefit from it. So again, no reason to thank me, no reason to say, hey, you know, you're just a great guy. Just, just do it yourself. That's all. Just do it yourself. That's your business. You know, that's the business of trading. You want to benefit yourself, your family, your loved ones, you know, take care of your own personal uh, things, and that's it. And that's what gives me the, you know, the biggest joy when my members participate in taking full, full 110% advantage 100% advantage of uh, this hard work that I do for all of you guys. That's all. That's my biggest thanks. And I'm not being a nice, like, softy guy here, but I mean it. All right? So there we go. So on a shorter-term basis, these tactical lines can can tell you that, yes, we have that 2,900-plus uh, thing, and then, then 2,930, which is a good another 200 points from here before we're hitting some, you know, before we're hitting some seriously overbought level, which is generally in the 2920 to 202940 S and P level, giving you quite slightly, uh, giving you a range. Okay. 
So if you where we closed that was twenty eight ninety eight. Uh, sorry, 2892, 2893. So if you add another 20 points to it or 30 points to it, uh, you are looking at, um, yeah, like around 200 plus points or so before the market. And here's the sound effect. Boom. Okay. Hits a big wall. Get a nice couple of hundred point pullback. Revaluate the situation and we move from there. Okay. So on, uh, so this is your this is your trade management chart. I've said this is a hundred a zillion times. I'm going to keep saying it till you guys start really using it. Um, and this helps me a lot. Sometimes I'm out a little bit early, but at least I am not uh, there uh, selling at the wrong time, freaking out or holding the bag at the wrong time. If we are seeing some of these very large drops, you don't need me when these charts are there. There are, I've already done my job, to be honest with you. I don't need to be guiding people every 15 minutes throughout the day, which I do. Okay, so some traders and members have been with us for a while. They get spoiled. They're like waiting for every single five-minute you know, uh, tweet, but uh, get unspoiled, okay? You start using these charts. You'll be in a better off position. You want to bail out when you see a red candle like that? Sure, do it. You want to do a couple of shorts as we see this expansion candles. I've taught all that extensively on my advanced coaching sessions, even on a lot of these free webinars that I do. Do it. Take it or take, you know, take take, take the ball, uh, uh, take control of the car. Start driving it. So you can make 30, 40% on these candles. I generally don't tend to be a big short at these levels for reasons obvious. Because you start, you start shorting the market heavy at this level, which the media will tell you and all other trading services that you guys follow, and you should follow, uh, or in other forums, they start getting super bearish here. You get a big bounce, which I said was gonna be a bear flag. I was right. That means we created a double bounce, which created a falling wedge. I even write that down. This is a real, like, real time strategic technical analysis course that you're getting for free. You get a falling wedge, and then you get these powerful bounces. You get a consolidation for about two days. You get up to the next level. You get another consolidation channel. That breaks out, probably get another consolidation channel, which should, given the primary trend being up over the near term and over the long term, uh, you should be hitting the upper end of this channel. Things get really fuzzy, dicey when the media starts getting all excited and mom and pop truly start feeling this is it. This is when the market's, you know, not going to be doing those 600, 700 point drops. Is That's exactly when you get these type of sharp, sharp tactical pullbacks. It's just the nature of the game, all right? And the robots know it. They know. They feel your emotions. How do they feel your emotions? They got a little detector in your heart, in your brain. No. They feel emotions by looking at the type of trades you're doing. What stops you're putting on? You're showing your hand at the poker table when you're putting out those, you know, limits and everything out there. They know exactly where to zap you. Scare the living daylights. Create these huge type stop loss, you know, stop limit cells type of programs. And these are the opposite short covering programs. They know it. So we should depict all this prior to it happening most of the times using these charts so you all can benefit from it. That's all. So right at this level will be, in my opinion, the first, this is when we're going to be hitting the all-time highs, the previous all-time highs. Uh, and we could bust a, bust a move above that too. But keep in mind that this is the zone of where it's short term euphoria, which by the way is has not been seen whatsoever, um, neither in the trading communities, which are constantly talking about shorting the market, constantly uh, missing out on everything, and not and not on the institutional side. Which brings me to a very very important point. I put out a trade uh, 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 article out there, which from Marko Kalanovic, who is probably, in my opinion. And I don't idolize anyone. You know that. The only one you idolize is God. I don't want to start getting evangelist here. But the point is that he is truly one of the best. That's it. Marko Klanovic is, a, uh, is for JP Morgan, the ultimate quant market forecaster. 
I've talked about him before. He doesn't talk much. He comes in once in a while. And him and a few others, but him primarily, and believe me, he's a big shot. But big shot meaning he's one of those guys who's a quant type of guy, not talking about emotional garbage. Okay? About politics and all that stuff. So Marco uh, thinks the S&P could hit 3,000 next month. Yeah, it could happen for reasons I just explained to you. That big squeeze we could head to was that big squeeze where the two sigma type of and the George Soros type of dogmatic shorts get final squeezed and you get this rampant out of control 400 point up days two or three days in a row. Yes. Will that be the final, final hurrah of the bull market? No, but it will be a short term major tradable top. And that's where you get into that zone here. That's when people emotionally feel very, very good. Chat rooms are more full. Mom and pop say, hey, you know, market looks really good. Maybe I should call John there at Fidelity and say, move my, all my money I've been sitting on for the last two years into the international growth fund or the tech fund. And what will we be doing? We'll be selling. And we'll be looking for nice tactical swing and short-term shorts. Not dogmatic, tactical. It's really plain and simple. It really is. So Marco talks about it. And the other thing that this is going to happen, it's not just mom and pop, and it's not their fault. It's the media, it's their brokers, it's their idiotic, emotional money managers who basically keep them down and then in their own way get them excited to buy on the overall up, upper end of the Wave 5 Elliott Wave Theory top. So what he talks about is also institutional positioning. Very simple English. Institutional positioning means that institutions, as in hedge funds and many other players in the market, are heavily, pension funds included, are quite under positioned in their allocation in US stocks or equities. So if they are supposed to have, let's say, 30% equities, just giving you a hypothetical example, they are maybe at the 20% level. So when those guys, and they're not buying 100 shares of this, and they're buying like $10 million here, $100 million there. So off, a, off individual particular sectors or certain ETFs or certain stocks, they are moving the markets. And we are showing this here at Clutus A Trading how to be selective on multiple individual stocks despite down days in the market whether they be the apples, whether it be Tesla getting caught in that move down, then buying at the low and capturing 20 points within two days or so. NVIDIA, just so many examples. Just please go to the Twitter feed and you'll see it. Whether it be Humana, a new trade, swing trade in play. So many retail winners win casinos thanks to our member. I think it was JB who mentioned that. Um, hey, take a look at Win. Start moving. It's okay. Start to look at it. We were two days late. Didn't matter. It still went up three days in a row, and the calls were up more than three to four hundred percent. Whether whether it be a AutoZone, which is like Chipotle, a consistent up to I said it's going to ten fifty when the stock was at 990. We were buying it from 600, but I wish I'd stayed long with the stock longer. <sighs> but it happens, right? But Azo, uh, yeah, at like 900, 890, I said, the stock's gonna go to 1,000. Just because I said, because I'm like a Kramer type of guy, saying, oh, it's gonna go 1,000 because it's at 900. No, I looked at the chart and it's, uh, I, and yeah, I drew out the chart and it, so it's gonna go to 1050. I said Azo was going to go to 10.50. So we bought the 10.50 calls at around $2 and change. And let me show you the magic of what we do here. That's, that's, that's Humana. Beautiful, beautiful upside, beautiful candles. And we know exactly the levels we're going to sell. So this stock, this chart, this was drawn well ahead. This was this was a daily chart that I'd looked at, and I said the stock is going to go to about 1050, like right here, 
1072 to adjust it. And so we support the 1050 calls, the run two and change. Those calls basically uh, went, I think they were around four bucks, yeah. They were still steep when it was stock was all the way down there. Steep meaning on a relative valuation basis. They went to close to 30. So looking at this chart here, this was the big breakout, 966. The stock basically went to 1049.73. I mean, can you get any more accurate? I don't make up numbers. I look at my charts. I, 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 I use my own fundamental analysis based on the overall picture of why, why the stock is moving for reasons. Mix it in with the hardcore technicals that I use or tactical charting that I use, pattern symmetry, all kinds of stuff. And the stock went to 1049.73. And I said it was going to go to 1050. Look at one of my previous videos. You'll, you'll see it. Or on Twitter feed, type in, you know, do a search on Twitter and you'll see it, what I said. And this was only like three weeks ago. So anyway, so coming down to it, um, read this. Hedge funds are heavily under position, not heavily, they're, they're, they're under position. So that means they have to bring their allocations up for equities. That means they have to buy stocks. That is a major. And this guy said this back in December, because what happened in December? Now going back to it, just so you all understand why this is going on. Back in December, this was a monthly, this is a monthly chart, obviously, which is clearly telling us the uptrend is very much intact for now. Look at that. Now I'm not going to even explain that because I explained that a zillion times. All right, what the, what the, what the full stochastics and the power of it is, the slow stochastics, the full stochastic it is really really simple. If you if you try to keep it simple, if you look at the overall picture just by following this, it really is. So this is what happened in December. The full flush out. Okay, these are I'm not going to say generational flush outs, but they're serious flush outs. These are the type of flush outs that we didn't, the type of candles, if you look at the width of the candles, of course, markets are a lot higher than we were back in 2009. Similar to what we saw during the Great Recession of 2007 to 2009, this multi-month move. We've had multi-month corrections along the way. So this was so fast, so furious, and we were trading in between that. Let's go listen to our those strategic videos that I put out there. Look to all the all the uh, trade alerts and charts real time that I put out there during this extremely, extremely vicious period of the months of October, November, December, the final flush, the Christmas Eve massacre, December 24th, for markets, obviously. Okay. that it flushed out a significant amount. Forget mom and pop. Mom and pop were not even here. So they, you know, I don't know what they were selling here, whatever they had. So it was the largest outflow of money out of U.S. and international equities. Forget international, we're talking U.S. here. Equities that we have seen in a decade. Everything was dark. Like, you know, so we charted it out. We looked at the lower Bollinger. We looked at a lot of things. We looked at where these, uh, where the oscillate, I mean, this oscillator, the stochastic uh, was going, and it was reaching levels not seen since 2012. And the worst it could get to, honestly speaking, would be a negative 0.30. That would be 2009. Like, wow. So I make, we mixed in a lot of stuff. We mixed in the fundamental picture. We mixed in the technical picture. We mixed in the cognitive behavioral picture. And go listen to my videos, what I said at that time. And tell me if I'm right or wrong, what's going on. Not that I really care what anyone really thinks. I don't. I do care what my members think. I'd like to get a lot more members, you know, in our group. So. The key is this happened. So it flushed out billions, trillions of dollars out of the market. On, you know, So all of a sudden, these guys are sitting there who were already not positioned right 
for this huge move since 2016 because they all thought that we're going to be at the end of the barrel because President Trump got elected and he was going to bring the U.S. economy down. Well, he didn't, did he? So they stayed under position through here. They started to get back in the market. I'm talking actual institutional moves. But overall, the mood stayed bearish. Just the way now. The mood stayed bearish. Like fear, like, oh my God. And partly for the right reasons too. The China trade war erupted. And this is serious stuff. So whatever the case, look at the technical picture. So this is what happened. So if you just purely were a robot and you were going through all this, all these charts that are produced daily, weekly, monthly charts, then you know what's going on. We're just going to test the highs. We're going to pull back from the high. This is what's going to happen, in my opinion. And this is a very high probability situation I'm showing you all, which I always do. We're going to go like this. We're going to get close to the highs, maybe not hit that exact high. We're going to create a pullback which will test this acceleration. Well, when I can give you approximately, give or take 100, 200 points on the market, like I did here, that when I said the market was gonna hit the lower end of the Bollinger, when you got started the final flush coming in, and this was the, this is the monthly chart, I'll give you right now what's gonna happen. You guys try to figure out how you're gonna manage your trade, okay? And I do this all the time with you all, anyway. You want, and people who are not still understanding the charts, not managing to control their trades and giving away profits, like, you know, just like making profits and just giving everything back to those nasty, nasty volatility algos. Like I always say, reach out for help. You know, it's like a drug addict completely dying on the streets, but won't reach out and, 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 and families coming in for intervention, but they won't reach out for help. That's what happens with retail traders. They're so dead set in their mind. No, 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 I will do it my way. It ain't working. So DM, direct message me, get in touch with me. I'll try to offer as much help as possible. I ain't your broker. I'm not your fiduciary responsibility. I'm not your advisor, but I can certainly give you some technical guidance how to trade these charts. So take up that offer before it's too late. Markets, up or down, will always offer a great opportunity to supplement your income if you're working full time, or be and if you're full time, if you're working full time in, in another career and trading part time, or offer a source of income like myself, who is a full. I I depend on the markets, and as a full time trader, you have to write your own paychecks, pay back the loans you owe, pay back things that that are going on. So it's it's a lot of hard work, but it's satisfying. So bottom line is, this is what the story is. So let's make this bigger. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, I'm not quite sure the way the conference went off on that side. So hopefully this is a continuation of that. So I do apologize for that. Um, it was automated in the go-to meeting. So let me, let me.